IPv6 management. Let's have a look at the different operating systems. The most common is probably still Microsoft Windows. In 1998, Microsoft released the first IPv6 stack trial version for Windows 95. In 2001, Windows XP had broad support of IPv6 already. And in 2006, since Windows Vista, IPv6 is enabled by default, even on Windows Server. Windows also by default uses randomized interface identifiers with Slack, so it uses privacy extensions, which is a good thing, since Windows Vista. The lifetime of the public address is reset on each router advertisement, which makes the address theoretically static. It is not generated new. If your uptime is 100 days, as long as you do some communication to the outside, your address always stays the same. That's also a good thing for management purposes, so the device is trackable as long as it is active in the network. And additionally, Windows generates a temporary address for outbound connections. If you want to reach your IPv6 host from inside your network, you can reach it on the same address always. But if you open your browser and go to Google, then you're using the temporary address and Google will not be able to track you using your IP address, maybe cookies or something else, but not your IP address. Here are some examples on Windows. We will not discuss this in detail. You can check it out yourself. This is how to show the IPv6 interfaces, how to set an IPv6 address, how to display your addresses, how to create a static or default route, how to show the routing table, the neighbor cache, IPv6 firewall, and how to show the privacy extension settings and enable or disable them, and trace route. Lastly for Windows, do not deactivate IPv6. A lot of people I know used to do that, but Microsoft says IPv6 is an integral part of Windows. If you disable it on Windows Vista 2008 server or a later version, some components will not work anymore. That means they have configured or programmed new components to be IPv6 only. It is needed. Parts of these components are Home Group, Remote Assistant, Direct Access and Windows Mail. This will not work anymore if you disable IPv6. So Microsoft recommends to leave IPv6 enabled even if there is no IPv6 connectivity to the outside. So even if you don't have an IPv6 router in your network or your internet service provider does not use IPv6 yet, still leave IPv6 enabled. Linux started in 1996. There was the first IPv6 code in kernel 2.1.8. And in 2000, a Japanese project sets the goal to fully implement IPv6 in Linux. And by 2008, this was nearly complete. Let's have a look at some examples. Also here, we're not discussing this in detail. You can try that yourself and you should. So install a lab Linux machine and try this out. You can display your current IPv6 addresses for every network on your host there will be a link local address starting with FE80. You can also configure an IPv6 address statically. You can remove it again. You can display the neighbor cache. You can configure a default route or set another route. You can remove the route again. You can display the routing table. Everything like in Windows is also working on Linux. Linux is fully IPv6 capable. Let's look at the third operating system that's common, Mac OS X. This is the same. You can use DHCP. You can also use a static IPv6 address, like in this example, or you can use Slack. Everything works fine. 